and thank you for joining me on the show today. This is The Now Talks, a collection of inspiring personal stories and leadership lessons from some of the world's most iconic leaders. It is the weekly podcast for women in leadership brought to you by Nations of Women. My name is Dr. Tina Alton, and I'm your host for today and the coming weeks. Okay, well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you have joined us from today or listening from today in the world. My name is Tina Alton. I am coming to you live from London. And for those who don't know me, I am the CEO and president here at Nations of Women. And tonight I have with me one amazing, extraordinary woman, leader, a sister, a friend, and a confidant of of mine, Dr. Zinzi Dillon, all the way live from New York or New Jersey or anywhere else you want to decide because she she's she's global. So Dr. Z, thank you so much for you know saying yes to join us this uh, today and to just share pieces of your your transformational journey as as an iconic global leader. And uh, but just by way of introduction, because I don't think I would ever do you justice to, to introduce you because you have so many incredible hats you wear and you wear them so well. So just by way of introduction, um, just to tell us a little bit about yourself and you know your journey to to your journey to here as as an iconic leader. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tina, for the invitation. It is an honor to, to be part of uh, this conversation. Um, as you have introduced me, I'm uh, Zinzi Dillon. I'm currently the CEO founder of uh, Camo Global Capital. And I'm also a promoter for Avid Bank Project, which is a banking project uh, that uh, uh, we are currently working on. Um, uh, I'm uh, the um, Goodwill Ambassador for the African Union Development Agency to the USA. Um, I'm also the, on the board for Cassava Holdings, Cassava Smart Tech Holdings, which is uh, now Eco Cash Holdings, listed uh, on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. Uh, it is a fintech uh, doing amazing work in Zimbabwe. Uh, I do chair. I do chair the audit committee, and I am the deputy chairperson for the board. Wow! 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 Now I I I had many dreams when I was a little girl. One of them was the I'm gonna have my own bank one of these days when I grow up. You know, everybody used to laugh at me, but I that you know, God had other plans because now I have a sister who actually is living my dream. So, you know, it's it's incredible that uh, sometimes all these little dreams in our hearts and then, you know, God in his own way kind of like entwines our lives with people that have been, you know, prepared, equipped and wired for that. So I just, I just love your your excellence as a leader and just seeing how you execute as a leader because we've worked on a few just a you know handful of projects and just seeing the diligence the excellence the quality with which you work so i just want to i i want to um bring us to this this point of you know you've talked about a little bit just a little bit of what you do but as 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 a female leader has that always been easy? Because these are all roles that required you to take some, some wild amount of risk in my little, you know, understanding of, of, of what you do. Has that always been easy? Um, but also what has been like the, what has underpinned your capacity and ability to take those risks in some of the roles that you have um, undertaken? Well, thank you. Um, Has it uh, been easy? I would say it's been an interesting journey. Um, 
with uh, challenges, but um, where one has to posture, um, you know, it depends with the posture one is taking. Uh, am I posturing myself for the challenges or I'm actually seeing the challenges as opportunities for growth? Uh, which has really been uh, my posture. When a challenge comes through, um, I'm seeing it. It's not going to bury me. Uh, it's not going to, 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 to crush me. I am going to take it headlong, and I am going to, to, to see what is it that I need to learn out of this uh, process. Um, but also, there have been uh, very interesting opportunities um, but uh, life is very interesting. What I've learned in life, uh, before coming, I, I used to, I was in banking for over 35 yeah, years. Um, I've done the reserve banking, you know, starting from Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, where I ended up uh, being uh, the head of finance there. Uh, you know, I worked uh, in a reserve bank of uh, different reserve banks, actually, uh, including work attachments at the World Bank, Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Uh, very interesting uh, journey. Um, and uh, my last position was with Barclays Africa, uh, where I was uh, head of uh, public sector for corporate and investment banking. Uh, for Africa, excluding South Africa. So working with different governments in terms of uh, their uh, uh, corporate and investment uh, banking needs and looking for solutions for them. Um, what was very interesting there is um, when people write you an email, uh, they are saying, Mr. Um, and I, I just used to laugh about that because I found it a very interesting stereotype where people think this kind of a position, a man, it's for a man, it's reserved for a man. So how do we show up? How do I show up as a woman in that uh, male dominated world? I, is what I saw and what I found to be um, very uh, helpful is to show up as me. I must show up as me. Uh, and when I show up as me, then I am being authentic. Uh, I am be, being me as a leader, me, uh, you know, doing, I'm um, presenting what I have to present. Uh, if it is in the boardroom, uh, I have to make sure I prepare for the board packs. I prepare for the board meeting. Um, I am clear on uh, what I need to understand and the value that I need to add in that meeting and for that organization. So it's very, very important. And also for me, what has really driven me very, very well is understanding why am I here <laughs> and who has sent me here? And who am I representing? My faith, very, very clear. I don't put it in the face of people, but my life is to be a living testimony. Uh, people have to read a letter. And uh, the letter that I present is how I present myself. That's the letter that people, so they read the Zinzi letter. <laughs> and who has authored that letter? So it's really about uh, how do I show myself and uh, represent the God that I serve uh, in a way that gives him honor uh, when people see what I am doing. So I am not doing things for myself, uh, self-interest. The days for self-interest and self-promotion, they are over. It is about uh, doing what I am doing to transform the lives of people if it is if the if the issues on the table if it is in the boardroom uh, i've sat on so many boards uh, in zimbabwe in um in south africa as well i used to chair the the audit committee for the public service commission i used to chair the audit committee for the department of public enterprises all state-owned uh, companies in South Africa, 
they are they were they are actually managed by that department uh, it was a huge portfolio and i recall uh, one of the meetings when we started when i was appointed as chairperson there there was a man there was an issue that uh, i had to deal with dynamics in the boardroom um and i i always lean uh, in the spirit of God. That's what I do. How do I deal with this? And uh, of course, wisdom prevailed. And during tea break, uh, one of um, the board members came to me. It was a man. He owned an, an accounting firm, very, very not well known. He came to me and he said to me, I didn't know. You, you, it was a confession. I did know that women could do this. Uh, the way you handled that matter, it was you know, amazing. And all I could say was, we are here, <laughs> right? We are here. So, but I gave glory to the Lord because it was not my own kind of wisdom, but it was the wisdom that I pulled from the spirit of God himself. So there are so many uh, testimonies, so many uh, stories that I can share. But in all that, how do we become who we have been called to? Uh, and what are we doing? If what we are doing is outside what we have been called to and wired for, because everyone is wired for success. Everyone is, is created in the image of God whether they know God or not, but they are created in the image of God and in his likeness. So there are no exclusions. It's about how we activate that and uh, how we become and we work it out without slapping scriptures in people's faces, but leaving the scriptures and become, you know, the word that people can read and experience. So that's, uh, I, and I'm not saying I'm hundred percent, uh, right all the time. There are times when I fall, and when I fall, I. It's very important to actually acknowledge that hey, I was wrong here. Uh, I and I apologize, and we move on. And there are certain people that I've worked with before. Uh, you know, in my journey, um, you know, it's very important even as leaders how we lead people. Uh, are we leading people from a heart love perspective where we, you know, you, you understand, we may not fully understand people, but uh, you walk the journey with them, uh, so to say, without discarding them. Some people, they behave the way they behave because they are wounded inside. They have gone through experiences and it, the way they project themselves, they are projecting the pain that is in them. How do we then make a difference? I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a time when I had a PA. A, I, I've had so many uh, personal uh, assistants, executive assistants uh, in my journey. But this particular one, um, I took over this assistant from uh, the office I was taking over. But nobody liked uh, that lady. Uh, she was just nasty to people, not very nice to people. And uh, I had to deal with her. I had, she had to work for me. She had to support me. And I just said, Lord, this one, I don't know how to do this one. <laughs> you are going to help me with this one. And I took her for lunch, just to talk. And I said, you know, there's a reason why we are working together and why we've been brought together. And we shall figure it out. Um, and then the other time we went again for lunch, very important, you know, it's, Jesus always brought people through communion, feeding the 5,000. It was about eating. Uh, you know, just breaking bread, uh, 
it breaks things. Breaking bread breaks, breaks you know the ice. It bre- it breaks through uh, you know to into the into the space or personal space of a person. They open up because there's a connecting place there where you are communing. So what happened there? She started sharing about her life. I'm asking, and then one day I'm doing a performance review. Um, then I said, she, she's one, she's the best PA I've ever had. One of the best, uh, you know, uh, executive assistants I've ever had. Highly professional, very proficient, but the behavior side was something else. But I later on uh, figured out that uh, sh- what she was going through, the way she was acting and behaving, it's because of what she has gone through. And she opened up, I've never heard a story like that before. She, it, this was during a performance review process. I just said, you know, in terms of your work, you are in A plus, but let's talk about the behavior. She started to talk, who, who, I, who is this person? I'm asking the question, who is this person? And then, opened up, she broke up, she cried, she cried. I had to hug her, you know, and she's just crying and I am crying and it was amazing. And long story short, I just said, okay, you pick up your stuff, you can work from home. And um, that was a shift in that person's life, in that woman's life, that was a total shift. And I recall in one of the meetings, um, one of uh, the, the executives said to me, whatever you're putting in her water, continue putting in her water. She changed, she shifted. So I learned that uh, she had been left behind by the boss because she was, I think he couldn't handle her. And then when he heard that she has changed, he came to me. He wants her back. <laughs> so I said, oh, okay, you can have a bag provided when it comes to this point, let me deal with it. Yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's the story. There are so many uh, stories that I can share, but all I know is we are going there in the marketplace. It's a deployment. It's not, uh, it's not about the money. I would have people calling me headhunters. We have so much, uh, this company wants to talk to you. Uh, I said, I'm not in the market, but you haven't heard about the money. I said, it's not about the money. So being in the marketplace, doing whatever we are doing, if it is about money, you are captured. You are a captured person if it is about money. You are a captured leader if it is about money. It has to be about purpose. Why are you there? Why are you there? Who has sent you there? Is the job done? If this job is not yet done, regardless of how difficult that place is, regardless of how difficult your boss can be, you are there and you have to to weather it. You have to work through it. And in the process, you are growing and I am grown. I have grown through difficult situations. I, you know, there was a time where I would look forward to the next, you know, test to say, because I knew it was time for promotion. It was time for promotion and not running away from it. So, yeah, so it's not about money. It's about assignment and redemptive assignment and mandate. Wow, this is incredible. I mean, you've you've given us so many golden nuggets here and I'm, you know, conscious of time as well, but I think we're going to have to have you another time and really talk about um, the dynamics in the boardroom because I think this is an area that many, many, many female leaders, uh, there's no training. There's no training certain that I've come across that, you know, teaches you about the dynamics in the boardroom. You just, you just arrive in the boardroom and then you have to, you know, like figure your way, build your parachutes as you're on the way down. So I definitely would love to have you back to, to break that down a bit more for us. But one of the things you talked about is 
um, show up as you. So could you please help us, you know, in, in, in the last few minutes we have left, maybe two to three practical, practical tips or practical applications that the woman listening or reading can apply, follow, and, and begin to show up as who they are, because it, it's like, how do you, how do you do that? I mean, I've, I've had to grow and every day I'm growing in that area. It's a continuous journey, but for the woman that, you know, it's like stuck, they know that, you know, I have a, I have a, a, a wall or something. How, what are the steps that a woman can take to begin to show up authentically as who they are? Uh, firstly, it's um, believing in yourself. Um, because the world will only receive you as much as you receive yourself. Ah, as The world will only receive you with how you receive yourself. So how I receive myself, who am I? Uh, bold, uh, courageous. Uh, I have the integrity. So it's not like I, I, I'm too formed, uh, you know, uh, uh, too uh, uh, forked tongue. I speak this and I'm speaking this and there's no, it has to be clarity. Speak with clarity. Uh, speak with, uh, you know, honesty, you know, whatever I am saying, that's what I mean. I mean what I'm saying and I'm saying what I mean, right? Uh, without, um, you know, um, talking, you know, in political language, so to say. And um, don't play their game. Be a team player. But when I say their game, you know, there are people who are just so nasty. Uh, they're not so good. The, the language is filthy. You don't participate in that. Right. Uh, you, you simply don't participate in that language. So we go in there to clean it up. I got to a point where people, when they, I never said I don't like swear words. But when I'm there, they will, they will say, oh, I apologize because they don't hear that coming from me. So we go there to clean up. We are sent there to clean up by bringing the light, switching on the lights, right? And we should not, I, you know, just getting overwhelmed with people around the table. Um, I, we shouldn't just go there because you deserve that seat. That's why you are there. You deserve that seat and do what that seat demands. That seat requires you to, to do what you have to do and just know that you are a proxy from heaven. <laughs> that, that, that has kept me grounded. Whatever opinions I have, I am there for the people. I am there to speak for people who are not around the table. I am there to, to represent those who are on the streets. If it is banking solutions, how does this change the lives of people? How is this going to change the lives of women and you? That's, yeah, that's, that's what, uh, and we have to know our assignment, very, very important. Yes. That is so cool. I really love everything you've shared, particularly, you know, um, I am saying what I mean and I mean what I'm saying. I think that always, always, always is, is key. And I think for anyone, you know, irrespective of faith or whatever culture, we all recognize when that is not present and that when that's not present, it takes away integrity, it impacts your character and impacts so many things. So when you go into, when you're in the room, you must, you know, understand why you're in the room and do what that seat requires. This is incredible. So in, we have, I mean, we have like 
62 seconds left before the battery so kicks us out. If there's if there's one thing we can learn from your life, and I've been waiting to to ask you this question. If there's one I learn every time from you, if there's one thing that you would want me to learn from your life, what would that be? It's okay to say I don't know. So that we can learn. Other, otherwise, you, you are playing on the, if not, you'll be playing on the narcissistic spectrum. This is so good. So people, you have heard it from Dr. Zinzi Dillon herself. It's like, you know, the challenges in life. Um, I, I mean, perspective is that I've had an interesting journey. So even the language we use to describe Maybe our circumstance, all of those, they all matter. So I don't know what situation you're in right now, but if you're listening, begin to change your word, begin to use your word to shift your atmosphere, to shift your situation. And she's also talked to us about, you know, see these challenges or interesting points as opportunities for growth so mm-hmm. that you can so that you can grow and, you know, um, show up as you. That is always, always, always going to be like your key is show up as who you are. Understand why you are in the room, in the boardroom or in that leadership seat. Who are you representing? And are you actually, you know, showing up as the person that you have been called and created and designed to be? understand the dynamics of the boardroom, right? Have a heart, heart, heart to love people um, as a leader. See the potential in them beyond whatever, you know, problems or behavior they may be exhibiting. Be able to see, be the leader that has the eyes to see beyond. And um, find, find ways to, to engage with the people you're leading in a way that makes them feel whole rather than discounting them. And always remember that, you know, if you're a leader who is about the money, you are captured. If you're a leader who's not about the money, then you are a leader who is about purpose. And then finally, we've got here, receive yourself. The world would only receive you as much as you receive yourself. Speak with clarity, speak with integrity, speak with, you know, from a place of um, good character. Don't play the games. Mind the language that you, you know, you let come around you. And you, you have been formed for purpose and for greater works. And then finally, the one thing that I i have been so privileged today to learn from your life, Dr. C, and at the gold nugget is it's okay to say, I don't know. So my dear friends, um, if you've ever struggled with, you know, that today you have the key as a leader, it's okay to say, I don't know. So that you then don't you don't you don't land yourself into a situation i i always think of it this way you know when when i don't know something and i don't say that i am opening up myself to manipulation either i'm then going to be manipulated or i am going to have to manipulate somebody else and that is a, that is a line that we can't cross so um, if you've if you've listened and you've taken notes, let us know how you're applying these practical ways that Dr. Z has you know shared with us. Send us an email, send us a text, whatever you want to do. Let us know how you're applying this in your life. What are the results? And if you have any questions for Dr. Z, please send it to us as well. Now at nationsofwomen.com, we will get it to Dr. Z and we will bring her back again. But I have exhausted my time and that is so naughty of me. I am reprimanding myself right now. But Dr. Z, thank you again for the gifts of your time and your your skills, your expertise, experience and allowing us to to receive of, of that from you today. Thank you for the great work you are doing. Nations of Women, amazing, amazing mandate, amazing assignment. And together we will make it happen. We will save the world, we will transform the lives of people. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you again. Thank you.
And that's all for this week. You've been listening to Dr. Tina Alton with the Now Talks, the weekly podcast for women in leadership, brought to you by Nations of Women. All that remains is for me to say, have a fantastic week, stay safe, and reach out if you need any help now at nationsofwomen.com. Until next time, enjoy the pursuit of your potential. And remember, now is your time. Thank you.